The Tonga volcano eruption sent literal shock waves across the globe at the weekend, prompting a string of tsunami warnings. Here's what's happening. The once in 1,000 years eruption at the Hanga Tonga Hanga Hape volcano on Saturday did not emerge from smaller volcanic cones as in previous eruptions in 2009 and across 2014 and 2015. Rather, it blasted out of a five-kilometer-wide underwater caldera, according to Shane Cronin, professor of earth sciences at the University of Auckland. The power of the explosion is likely because magma rose up from the caldera so quickly there was no time for a film of steam to form and allow the magma's surface to cool as it passed through the water. Instead, hot magma came into direct contact with cold water, creating explosions which split the magma up and forced it into further contact with additional cold water, causing additional explosions. The resulting blast reached supersonic speeds, sending out a sonic boom that reached New Zealand, according to the Associated Press. Unusually high waves drowned two people in Peru and caused widespread tsunami alerts elsewhere. Damage to internet connections meant that very little news of the volcano's impact on Tonga was available initially, though the Associated Press reported tsunami waves crashing across the shore and people rushing to higher ground. Two smaller eruptions occurred at the same volcano on December 20th and January 13th, and previous 1,000-year major caldera eruption episodes involved many separate explosion events, meaning several weeks or even years of major volcanic unrest could be due, according to Professor Cronin's article in the Conversation. In line with this reasoning, CNN reported on Monday that the volcano had erupted again for the third time in four days. Though unlike Saturday's eruption, which was likely the biggest recorded anywhere on the planet in more than 30 years, there were no additional tsunami alerts. Of course, though the scale of this eruption caught many by surprise, it is not the first time in recent months that tsunami fears have risen. With the eruption on La Palma prompting similar, though less urgent, fears, the threat of underwater volcanoes is also nothing new either. With the Smithsonian Institution reporting that more than 70 percent of all volcanic eruptions occur underwater. Just last week, National Geographic reported that a group of volcanoes in the Aleutian Islands could be a part of an underwater supervolcano the same size as the Yellowstone caldera. In a study presented to the American Geophysics Union, scientists suggested the six volcanoes collected in an Aleutian Island group called the Islands of the Four Mountains are actually standing on the edges of one massive underwater caldera. The scientists now say they are uncovering evidence of such a large bowl under the ocean, as well as rock samples and undersea ridges that indicate a cataclysmic volcanic eruption did very possibly cause the depression that rings the six active volcanoes of the island group. At the same time, controversial plans to take advantage of minerals generated by such underwater volcanic activity are also gaining traction right now. This is because when shifting tectonic plates create hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, these vents interact with seawater to create polymetallic nodules, polymetallic sulfides, and ferromanganese crusts rich in valuable minerals such as cobalt and nickel, which are used in many forms of green technology and mobile phones. With that end goal in mind, in June, the Pacific Island nation of Nauru activated a legal trigger to allow a Canadian company to start mining in two years' time, even if the UN has not written rules guiding the practice, leading to fears that a dangerous gold rush could be about to kick off. According to an applied mathematician's theory, giant sound waves, known as acoustic gravity waves, could be used to lessen the force of a tsunami before it hits land. The theory states that two acoustic gravity waves would be released from a mitigation station in the ocean toward the tsunami. The acoustic gravity waves would exchange energy with the tsunami, spreading it out and reducing its maximum height. According to the theory. Acoustic gravity waves could have reduced the height of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami by five meters, which may have saved lives and protected property. As the La Palma volcano shows no sign of stopping its eruption, there is a possibility it could cause a mega tsunami, according to a 2001 study in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. The study outlined how cracks below the surface of the volcano, exacerbated by an eruption, could cause between 150 to 500 cubic kilometers of rock to slide into the ocean at 100 meters per second. The New Zealand Herald outlines how the huge force that landslide generated could create massive waves up to 900 meters high that could eventually hit the coast of the Americas at heights of up to 25 meters, with a tsunami reaching Florida around nine hours after the initial collapse. 
Subsequent studies have played down the risk of this kind of disaster occurring for a number of reasons. Informed by new models created after the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami, it has been argued that any collapse of the ridge would not occur with the force described in the original study, with one explanation for that being that it is likely any collapse would happen in stages. Most do, however, agree that any collapse would prove devastating for the Canary Islands around La Palma at the very least. A massive subterranean tree moving lava up to the Earth's surface could, in millions of years, cause the disintegration of Africa, according to a study in the Nature Geoscience Journal. Quantum Magazine explains that most often volcanoes' existences are explained by tectonic plate boundaries interacting with each other in a variety of different directions. However, mantle plumes, defined by Science Daily as upwellings of abnormally hot rock within the Earth's mantle, can also form volcanoes as tectonic plates pass over them, like marshmallows over a campfire. And the new study fills in previously simplistic ideas about plumes via the aforementioned subterranean tree, which extends 3,000 kilometers between East Africa and Réunion, a French island in the western Indian Ocean. This plume may have already spent 120 million years dragging Australia away from India and Antarctica, Madagascar from Africa, and the Seychelles from India. But the new map of its branches suggests it could one day contribute to East Africa splitting off from the rest of the continent and, beyond that, produce cataclysmic eruptions from below South Africa that have apocalyptic consequences. Scientists have pieced together huge new details about structures hidden below Earth's surface Here's what you need to know. A massive subterranean tree moving lava up to the Earth's surface could, in millions of years, cause the disintegration of Africa, according to a study in the Nature Geoscience Journal. Quantum Magazine explains that most often volcanoes' existences are explained by tectonic plate boundaries interacting with each other in a variety of different directions. However, mantle plumes, defined by Science Daily as upwellings of abnormally hot rock within the Earth's mantle, can also form volcanoes as tectonic plates pass over them, like marshmallows over a campfire. And the new study fills in previously simplistic ideas about plumes via the aforementioned subterranean tree, which extends 3,000 kilometers between East Africa and Réunion, a French island in the western Indian Ocean. This plume may have already spent 120 million years dragging Australia away from India and Antarctica, Madagascar from Africa, and the Seychelles from India. But the new map of its branches suggests it could one day contribute to East Africa splitting off from the rest of the continent and, beyond that, produce cataclysmic eruptions from below South Africa that have apocalyptic consequences. The study actually adds brilliant detail to the theory of plumes that has been decades in the making. Hawaii, an archipelago made up of giant volcanoes despite the fact that it's not on any plate boundary, initially put scientists onto the fact that the interaction of tectonic plates could not fully account for the existence of volcanoes, according to Quanta magazine, with geophysicist John Tuzo Wilson speculating in 1963 that volcanic chains like these were made by tectonic plates drifting over stationary hotspots in the Earth's mantle. Then, in 1971, geophysicist William Jason Morgan suggested that these hot spots were caused by plumes of particularly hot material rising from the lower mantle. And from there, geophysicists calculated that plumes are around 200 degrees Celsius hotter than the standard parts of the Earth's mantle, and that when they reach the bottom of tectonic plates, their heat melts their surroundings, creating magma. They also even figured out that plumes can carry mantle material upwards, which feeds extra magma into the crust, which combines with the previous effect to explain most intraplate volcanoes. To help fill in the bones of that theory with an actual 3D model of one plume, the giant subterranean tree, which starts 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's surface, scientists use measurements of seismic waves emanating from earthquakes, working with the fact that as those waves pass through geologic bodies, those bodies alter the wave's speed and trajectory. Interestingly, this technique was used previously to discover two giant blobs, chemically distinct from the rocks that surround them, within the Earth's mantle, and many of the superheated plumes we've been discussing here today are believed to be rooted to these blobs, suggesting they play some kind of role in their formation, according to one geophysicist who spoke to Quanta magazine. The origin of the blobs themselves is still contested, with some labeling them as defunct tectonic plate slabs and others labeling them as the dissected corpse of Thea, a Mars-sized planet that collided with the early Earth, resulting in the creation of the Moon. Some scientists now even believe that Earth and Thea collided twice, one hit-and-run incident followed by a second total wipeout that formed the Moon. 
But whatever their origin, the result is that we've now got giant plumes sprouting out of them causing volcanic activity, and we're living the evidence of them even if we can't see them. In Hawaii right now, for instance, Kilauea, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, is erupting again, having been promising to do so for some time. In August, scientists monitoring it raised alert levels in response to a series of earthquakes and ground swelling at the site, which can be an indication that it will soon expel lava. Though the chances of an eruption then appeared to recede, the Hawaii Tribune reports that Kilauea eventually did begin to erupt on September 29th, sustaining lava fountain heights of 10 to 15 meters this Tuesday, with some lava rising to heights of up to 30 meters, according to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Obviously, no one's that worried about any of this because it's all pretty familiar territory for our planet. For the most part, the fact that Kilauea erupts so often makes it easier to deal with than less predictable phenomena. So its regular eruptions are more like quirks than disasters. In December, Kilauea erupted at the crater, creating a lava lake containing enough lava to fill 10 Hoover dams. But the videos of Kilauea's eruptions make it look more like a slow-rising bubble bath than the end of the world. The slow creep of the giant subterranean tree that will eventually swallow South Africa probably fits into that kind of category too. Alongside the fact that the Earth's crust is warping incrementally, millimeter by millimeter, because of the new ice we've melted, and the fact that Earth's core is growing lopsided because more heat is being released on one side than the other. In the urgency stakes, it's certainly not to be put alongside the fact that Antarctica is at the risk of a chain reaction collapse, or the fact that thinning ice melange, the glue that holds ice sheets together, means scientists believe we might have to revise up our estimates of how quickly ice melting is going to reach catastrophic levels. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.